the most wonderful time of the year, college football bowl season to begin Friday, December the 17th. Thank you for tuning in and listening to my college football bowl game bowl season preview live right here on YouTube. As always, I'm your host, Encyclopedia Sports, Cool and Luke96. Be sure to like, follow, and subscribe on social media. Links in the description below, the thumbs up button. Share, hashtag college football. Chat questions and comments, super chat, super stickers. Always greatly appreciated. As well, we'll get to the bowl games in a minute, all 40-plus, including the college football playoff and the national championship game that will take place on Monday night, January the 10th from Lucas Oil Stadium in the heartland of Indianapolis, Indiana. But uh, first, this weekend, and then a week from tomorrow, as I record this on Tuesday, December the 7th, 2021, 80 years following the attack on Pearl Harbor, a date in which we'll live in infamy. However, on Saturday, we have Army-Navy with the Heisman Trophy ceremony, and then early signing day next week before the bowl games do in fact begin. So for America's game, Army-Navy from East Rutherford, New Jersey on Saturday afternoon, 3 p.m. Eastern Time on CBS. Normally played in either Philly, Baltimore, the nation's capital, or from the Meadowlands and NYC. This year, Navy having a down year. Army's won four of the last five, but before then, Navy had won 14 straight. This is basically Navy's bowl game because with the down year, they're not going to a bowl game. Army is. They're going to play Missouri in the Armed Forces Bowl. So, go Navy. Beat Army. And then the Heisman will be awarded on Saturday night as well from New York City. Four finalists are, in fact, Alabama quarterback Bryce Young, Pitt quarterback Kenny Pickett, Michigan defensive end Aiden Hutchinson, and Ohio State quarterback C.J. Stroud. In that very order as well, I do believe that'll be how the results pan out. I believe Bryce Young will, in fact, win the Heisman, followed by Kenny Pickett, Aiden Hudson, and C.J. Stroud. So as the regular season ends, we transition now into the postseason for the bowl games. It will begin once again on Friday, December the 17th, a week from Friday. We're going to begin, go in order as these games will in fact be played from that Friday the 17th, a week before Christmas. Hopefully everyone had a happy Thanksgiving. We'll have a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year as well. From then until early January, 40 plus bowl games, 42 to be exact, from the Bahamas Bowl to the College Football Playoff to the National Championship game with every other bowl game in between. Middle Tennessee State and Toledo will kick us off at noon on ESPN in this year's Bahamas Bowl. Both teams have played in this game before. Both teams have lost before. Toledo losing in 2018. Middle Tennessee State losing in 2015. So, something's got to give. Give me the Toledo Rockets to rocket their way to a win. Holy shnikes, holy Toledo, Toledo. I do believe will, in fact, win this year's Bahamas Bowl. Later on that night as well, we'll have another MAC team in Northern Illinois taking on Coastal Carolina in the Walmart Greeter, I mean Tail Greeter Cure Bowl. Uh, and uh, the Huskies and Chanticleers, a lot of close games uh, for both teams this year. Down to the wire finishes. But 9-4 and four and 10-2 and two has to speak for something. So, um, should be a close game. But I feel like Coastal Carolina is the better team between the two, even though they did not win their conference this year. Northern Illinois did. They're your MAC champions here in 2021, defeating Kent State last weekend. So, basically, with that being said, I feel Coastal Carolina is going to find a way to win this game, and CCU is going to beat NIU in this year's Cure Bowl. Talk about conference championship games. Well, Western Kentucky and App State both lost their respective conference championship games last weekend, and now they'll meet in the Boca Raton Bowl on Saturday, December the 18th. We'll have one, two, 
three, four, five, six bowl games that very Saturday, along with two NFL matchups as well with the Raiders and Browns, along with the Patriots and Colts. So as we go south on you for an 11 a.m. kick from Boca between Western Kentucky and App State, App State a quiet 10-win season, sitting at 10-3. and three. They're going to win this game and pick up their 11th victory of the season. Two of their losses were to Louisiana Lafayette, the second, of course, being in the Sunbelt Conference Championship game. They also lost to Miami non-conference back in September. But uh, App State's been one of the most consistent college football programs over the past 25 years, dating back to when they were a D1 AA school, now, of course, the FCS level, before they jumped to the FBS ranks, of course, after they upset Michigan back in 2007. And App State, in program history, they have never lost a bowl game. They are 6-0 and all time. Make it lucky number 7 against Western Kentucky. UTEP and Fresno State in this year's PUBG New Mexico Bowl. Man, I tell you what, with these sponsors. Year in and year out, for the most part anymore, there's a few that still stand out, that they're still the same. I mean, really just, of course, whoever's spending the most money to get their brand out there for uh, sponsorship. But um, as much as, you know, shit changes, everything stays the same. And, I mean, okay, New Mexico Bowl, but PUBG as a sponsor? I mean, really? you kidding me? I wasn't expecting to read off that. They did actually add in another bowl game, which we'll get to here in a minute as well. But... Um, you know, when's the Fortnite bowl game, for God's sakes? Like, seriously, like, what the hell? I mean, these companies for sponsorship anymore, they'll do anything to get their name out there. But uh, I'll digress on that topic. But, uh, yeah, the uh, PUBG New Mexico Bowl, rather than Gildan, so from a T-shirt to a video game, uh, it'll be the Miners and Bulldogs and um, Fresno State, of course, now going to be looking for a new head coach as well, following uh, Kalen DeBoer's departure for Seattle to take over UW. Um, UTEP at 7-5, and five, I mean, that's a good season for them. You know, they weren't as good as uh, University of Texas Antonio by any means, um, who uh, actually defeated Western Kentucky in the uh, Conference USA title game last weekend. But, um, I mean, really... As long as you get to six wins, in my opinion, regardless of who you are, unless, you know, you are blue blood and you're winning consistently well year in and year out, you know, eight, nine, ten plus wins every single year, and then you have a down year like that. But a team like UTEP, seven and five, they'll take that. They'll go to the bowl game. Now, will they win that bowl game? I don't think so. I think Fresno State's going to win. But UTEP... Getting a bowl game at seven and five, from where they've been, you know, the past few years, and really throughout history, their last bowl appearance was in 2014, and before then, 2005. So, in a gist, they don't get many opportunities like this. They're going to embrace going to their respective bowl game, and they're going to hope they come out on top with a W against Fresno State in this New Mexico Bowl, earning their first bowl victory in half a century. But I think the Bulldogs are just uh, too tough. So Fresno State over UTEP in this year's PUBG New Mexico Bowl. From Breaking Bad Country, we head to Brian Kelly's family's new home state in Louisiana for this year's Independence Bowl between UAB and BYU. And this is an easy game to pick. The Cougs are going to beat the Flaming Dragons from Birmingham. Give me BYU over UAB. The Lending Tree Bowl later on that same day as well between Eastern Michigan and Liberty. Now, lending a tree, when I think of lending a tree, anymore, of course, to make paper, you got to cut down a tree. Well, this game is not being decided on paper. It's being decided on the field. And uh, Liberty, even both teams sitting at 7-5, and 
they're better on paper. I think they'll be better on the field as well. So give me the Flames over the Eastern Michigan Eagles. Jimmy Kimmel is sponsoring a bowl game this year for the first time ever. It'll be the Jimmy Kimmel LA Bowl from Southern California between Utah State and Oregon State. The Mountain West Conference champions in Utah State taking on the Beavs from Corvallis. Utah State surprisingly blew out San Diego State last week to win Blake Anderson, his 10th win of the season in his first year at the helm of the Aggies this year in 2021. Mean tweet, Will Reed, heads I win, tells you lose, as Rat once said. And this honestly is a coin flip game. Heads for Utah State, tails for Oregon State. The way Utah State played last week against San Diego State, I'm going to have to go with the Aggies over the Beavs, even though Oregon State did have a very, very good season. I think they'll come up just short. River Queen rolling on down to New Orleans for the RNL Carriers New Orleans Bowl between Louisiana Lafayette and Marshall. Lafayette losing Billy Napier to Florida. They won the Sun Belt, defeating App State twice this year. They sit at 12 and 1. Their only loss to Texas to begin the season. They're on a 12 game winning streak. Make it 13, even though Marshall also had a good season this year, 7 5. Just in my opinion, Marshall's just been too inconsistent down the stretch. And I think even with uh, an interim for the bowl game for LFL, um, Louisiana Lafayette will find a way to win and they'll beat Marshall and uh, send the uh, thundering herd back to Huntington, West Virginia. College football bowl games will take off Sunday, December the 19th, the 26th, and January the 2nd as well due to the NFL schedule, but the Myrtle Beach Bowl will kickstart us back up with Old Dominion and Tulsa on Monday, December the 20th. Old Dominion and Tulsa both sitting at 6 and 6. ODU the Monarchs had to win 5 in a row just to become bowl eligible. So they're either going to run out of steam or the train's going to keep a rolling. Tulsa on the other hand, they took Oklahoma State, Ohio State and Cincinnati all on the road down to the wire before they lost all three. But that has to speak for something. I mean, OSU, OSU and Cincy, Oklahoma State, Ohio State and Cincinnati with the last in the college football playoff, but the other two receiving New Year's six bowl bids, all finishing in the top ten, that's tough. I mean, arguably all, of course, could have been wins. Anywhere in between, they all resulted in three losses, yes, no doubt about it, but of course that was then, this is now. Tulsa will walk the line, living on Tulsa time, and find a way to win this game over ODU. Next, On Tuesday, December the 21st, we have two matchups, and the latter of the two, arguably one of the better bowl games before Christmas, and also arguably one of the better bowl games all bowl season long, depending on who you ask, but we'll get to that game in a second. But we'll head from Myrtle Beach to the blue turf of Boise, Idaho, for the famous Idaho Potato Bowl between Kent State and Wyoming. And to be honest, in this matchup, I have no idea who to pick. Other than I do know this, that the winner will receive a French fry trophy with French fries on top. So, you know, whether they're fresh cut, frozen, crinkle cut, even maybe a potato wedge or tater tot or two. I'm in the end here going to have to use a lifeline and phone a friend and see what they have to say. Because I have no clue who's going to win this game. So let me give them a ring and I'll get back to you. But in the meantime, later on that night, it'll be UTSA and SDSU, the University of Texas San Antonio and San Diego State, a 12-1, 11-2 matchup. University of Texas San Antonio very well could be and probably should be undefeated. They lost to North Texas two weeks back before winning their conference last weekend. San Diego State, on the flip side, lost to Fresno State and then got blown out against Utah State at home in the Mountain West Conference Championship game, as mentioned a little bit ago earlier as well last week. Um, San Diego State really just, they're cutting it too close down the stretch. Uh, And with the Roadrunners having their best season in program history, arguably, as mentioned, could be, should be, could have, would have, should have, but 
undefeated. They sit at 12 and 1. They'll get to 13 and 1 after when the Aztecs are going to need a Coyote to get after the Roadrunners. So uh, UTSA with the win. As mentioned earlier, with America's game Army Navy on Saturday. Army's playing in the Armed Forces Bowl, so it's going to be a little hard to pick against them. They're either going to be sitting at 8-4 or 9-3 and three entering this matchup with Mizzou. Regardless of the record, I think they're going to win and either get to 9-10 wins in at that point in time and win this year's Armed Forces Bowl. Thank you, as always, as well to any active or former military, whether you served in the Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines, or Coast Guard, thank you for your service. The next bowl game was recently just added to the slate, the Frisco Football Classic, not to confuse with the Frisco Bowl just a moment ago with UTSA and San Diego State, but because there were more teams bowl eligible this season than normal with the allotted number of bowl games they add in the frisco football classic with north texas and miami ohio and myself of course being a penn state and a pittsburgh steeler fan big ben roethlisberger potentially in his final season before he gets enshrined in canton ohio one day of course miami ohio his alma mater pittsburgh drafted him in the first round back in 2004 i'm gonna have to go with the red hawks over the mean green Mean Joe Green's alma mater in North Texas in this Frisco football classic and add in bowl game for this upcoming bowl season. From Gainesville and Orlando to Tampa in this year's Gasparilla Bowl, we will see UCF, the Knights, taking on the Florida Gators. Florida somehow squeaked their way into a bowl game at 6-6, six and six, firing Dan Mullen. Billy Napier will take over, but will not coach in the bowl game. Now, Gus Malzahn, who was fired from Auburn after the end of last year, now at UCF, good 8-4 campaign here this year. Sample size, he's only faced him once before, 0-1 against the Gators. So, not really a whole lot going there by any means, but I just cannot pick Florida in this game. So, I'm telling you now, if you take the Gators to beat UCF in this Gasparilla Bowl, I'll say I told you so because... They'll end up disappointing you one way or another. Ever since they took Alabama to the limit, I don't know what it is. They just haven't been the same team that they were to begin the season. Along with last year going to New Year's Six, they fire Mullen as Auburn did to Malzahn last year. He'll land on his feet somewhere, probably at a non-Power 5 school, as he did as well at UCF. I just don't know when or where. Hell, he might even take the year off for all we know. Uh, But... Yeah, they just haven't been themselves. Uh, I mean, Florida, they go from Urban Meyer to Will Muschamp to Jim McElwain to Dan Mullen and now Billy Napier. They haven't been the same hell past 15 years, let alone this past year in general. So, um, you know, they are sort of starting to turn into the USC's, Texas's, Nebraska's of the world, if you will. Florida is normally good during bowl season, but I don't think they're going to win this year. The Knights will slay the Gators in the Gasparilla Bowl. Christmas Eve and Christmas Day, hopefully everyone has a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. We'll see the Hawaii Bowl and Camellia Bowl. First off with the Rainbow Warriors of Hawaii playing on their home field once again for this Hawaii Bowl, taking on the Memphis Tigers. Hawaii is going to win that, I feel like, for some reason. And then uh, Georgia State and Ball State on Christmas afternoon. Expect a one-point win for whoever does, in fact, come out on top. But I'm going to take Ball State. Pizza, pizza for the win in the Quick Lane Bowl from Motown. We'll see Western Michigan and Nevada. A lot going on in the state of Michigan right now. Eastern, Central, and Western Michigan, along with Michigan and Michigan State, all receiving bowl bids. The Lions just picked up their first win of the season. But Carson Strong to Oxford Strong. Thoughts and prayers continued. Nevada, the Wolfpack, they win the Quick Lane Bowl. The Military Bowl from Annapolis, basically halfway from Boston College in East Carolina, so they meet right in the middle for this neutral site bowl game. The Military Bowl... 
BC and ECU, Eagles and Pirates. Um, this could go either way. Give me Boston College for the hell of it. And then the next day, we'll have one, two, three, four, five. I believe six is the max we'll get in one day, if I'm not mistaken. Um, a few twos, a bunch of threes, and then there's, uh, for the most part, a lot of fours and fives towards the tail end of the year, into the new year on January the 1st, in which we'll see five more bowl games being played that day. So um, this will be Tuesday, December the 28th now. Cougars and Tigers, oh my, in the Birmingham Bowl between Houston and Auburn. This game is going to be a lot closer than uh, the experts think, but Houston's going to end up winning. They're better than Auburn on paper, as mentioned earlier in that lending trade bowl with whoever the hell is playing in that game again. Um, they'll also be better out on the field. So Houston with the win over Auburn. And then in the first responder bowl, shout out to all our first responders as well. Air Force and Louisville. Air Force is going to win that, I feel like, too. And then we'll get the uh, Mike Leach AutoZone Liberty Bowl. Get in the zone, AutoZone, Mississippi State. Leach will get the better of his former school in Reckham Tech, but should be a good game. Uh, from Memphis, Tennessee. The Holiday Bowl will feature UCLA basically playing in their own backyard, taking on a team in NC State, going to have to travel the whole way across the country. Um, the Bruins and Wolfpack, I mean, could go either way here, honestly. A lot of these games, it's bowl season. You know, these teams, I would hope, going to lay it all out in the line and play their best ball to end the season on a high and move into next year of course but uh i know more about chip kelly i've seen ucla play more this season than i have nc state so give me ucla and then west virginia and minnesota from the desert west virginia is a lot like florida right now they had to claw their way to become bull eligible at six and six minnesota's had a decent year in the big Ten west um, of course, start of the season off with a loss against Ohio State. They lost to Bowling Green as well in a big upset for the Falcons. Uh, but they found a way to end the season on a high, close the regular season, defeating Wisconsin for Paul Bunyan's axe. And I think Minnesota, the Golden Gophers, will beat the Mountaineers from Morgantown. Next, with two football games taking place inside of a baseball stadium, we'll have the first of two SMU Virginia and Oregon Oklahoma matchups in which, hey, this is our bowl game, even though our head coach left for elsewhere. It'll be SMU and Virginia in the first ever Fenway Bowl from Fenway Park in Boston, Mass., and then we'll take a little trip down to NYC to the Bronx for the pinstripe bowl between Maryland and Virginia Tech. Further on down 95 to Orlando for the Clemson-Iowa State Cheez-It Bowl before we hit the Lone Star State of Texas for the Alamo Bowl between Oregon and Oklahoma. Four very good matchups, in my opinion, this Wednesday, December the 29th. SMU, I think they'll beat Virginia. Could be a shootout, to be honest with you. Bronco Mendenhall resigning. Virginia's looking for a new head coach. SMU just hired former offense coordinator from SMU, but more recently than not, from the U and Rhett Lashley to take over Sonny Dykes, who left to go across town to TCU. So SMU, give me the Mustangs over the Cavs. And then... Maryland and Virginia Tech in the Pinstripe Bowl in a ACC reunion. They actually just met in the ACC Big Ten uh, Challenge last week, I do believe, in college basketball. But on the field, Brent Pry's taken over the Hokies. And from what I've heard, he will coach Vaught Tech in this bowl game against Maryland, a team he knows quite well from 
most recently, of course, being the Penn State defense coordinator in the Big Ten, having played Maryland in the Big Ten East all eight years as the Nittany Lion defense coordinator under head coach James Franklin, including just a month or so ago, early November, Penn State late with a lot of big defensive stops, including a 90-yard interception return for a touchdown that sealed the win for the blue and white. So Virginia Tech, I do believe they'll beat Maryland in the pinstripe bowl because of Brent Pry's experience versus the Terps. Clemson, Iowa State, arguably one of the better matchups on paper this bowl season, along with Oregon, Oklahoma. As mentioned earlier, you can throw in UTSA and San Diego State as well. And then Pitt, Michigan State. Of course, the college football playoff with Cincinnati and Alabama and Georgia, Michigan. Penn State, Arkansas is a good matchup from Tampa in the Outback Bowl. Oklahoma State, Notre Dame. Hell, Iowa and Kentucky, a game to keep an eye on. Utah going to their first Rose Bowl, taking on Ohio State. Baylor Ole Miss should be a, a good one. That's offense, defense right there for you. And then, of course, the National Championship game. But we'll get more into all these games in a minute. But um, we left off hitting dingers in baseball to football. But now the cheese at Bowl with Clemson and Iowa State. Iowa State's going to run the football. They're going to run the damn ball, open up the play action, play good defense from their special teams to win. Do they have what it takes to beat Clemson? I don't know. Should be a good game. They're going to run it. They won't run it as much as Air Force did in their final game a few weeks back to get their first responder bowl, as mentioned a little bit ago, as the Falcons won that game by, I believe, 50 without attempting one pass but hell just last night on Monday Night Football the Patriots won on the road to the Buffalo Bills and won with Mac Jones starting at quarterback for him he finished two for three for what 20 yards pass and he had over 250 yards rushing it seemed like last night and a win's a win that's all that matters in the end and for Iowa State of course you know Matt Campbell's name's been floated out there for a number of jobs he's stayed put um i feel both him and luke fickle are content staying where they're at for the time being they'll both uh, be in the big 12 here over the next few years or so but um brent venables uh the clemson defense coordinator he's going to go to oklahoma i don't know if he's going to be coaching this game by any means or not i mean iowa state they're coming off a fiesta bowl win last year uh against Oregon, who plays later on against Venable's new team in OU, and Bob Stoops going to interim the Sooners in that Alamo Bowl, and we'll get out of the game here in a second after this, but Iowa State, I I don't know if they have, as mentioned, what it takes to beat Clemson. It's going to be a damn good game. I wouldn't be shocked if the Cyclones win. I mean, I think the whole state of Iowa is going to be in Orlando, Florida, over the holidays because Iowa State's playing the Cheez-It Bowl from Camping World Stadium in Orlando. And then Iowa, the Hawkeyes, they're also playing in Orlando at Camping World Stadium for the Citrus Bowl against Kentucky. Um, so, I mean, rivals are not for the Cyhawk. I mean, home field advantage, I mean, in their favor for sure, yeah. Um, taking on two good opponents... I think Iowa's going to have a better shot of beating Kentucky. That's going to be a little bit more low-scoring defensive showdown. This might be the same, though, too. I honestly have no idea. Um, really have to go back to the lifelines. and I mean, I've already uh, used the uh, phone call, but 50-50 on this, well, that's why they play. One team's going to win, one team's going to lose. Um it's a little hard to pick against Clemson. It is under Dabo Sweeney. Quiet 9-3 and three season this year. A uh, little disappointing, uh, but at the same time, uh, nine wins is nine wins. You know, not their usual college football playoff, 
uh, birth. I mean, anymore, it's college football playoff for bust. Really, it is, if you ask me. But, as mentioned earlier for a few teams, you get the six, seven, eight wins. That's a good year. Nine wins, a little less than they're used to, but, um, you know, Clemson, in the end, uh, they'll find a way to win this. Arguably, who knows, might go to overtime, might go to double, triple, maybe even the nine overtimes that Penn State and Illinois went to back in October. But um, Clemson over Iowa State, unfortunately. I like Matt Campbell a lot. I like Dabo Sweeney a lot as well. But um, somebody's going to win, somebody's going to lose, name of the game. Um, Clemson, they'll have a pizza party in the victory. So give me the Tigers. And then Oregon, Oklahoma in the Alamo Bowl. As mentioned, Bob Stoops going to interim Boomer Sooner. Because of that, along with Mario Cristobal leaving the Ducks to go to Miami, don't know who's going to enter them um, for them, but the way they've played the past couple games, including twice to Utah, and whether Lincoln Riley's calling the plays or not, Oklahoma's probably as good, if not a little bit better, than Utah. But Oklahoma, in the long run, go back to what I said about them all season long, um, they should have lost, I don't know how many games, probably five, six, seven games this year, to be honest with you. They had a lot of um, close ones. I expect this game to be close as well with, you know, both head coaches not being there now. Um, and in their eyes, moving on to uh, greener pastures uh, in Southern California and South Beach. But, you know, we'll see over the next few years how that works out for them and, you know, who's going to win this situation and who's going to lose it. And for the game, I mean, the Alamo Bowl arguably is, you know, still a top-tier bowl game. It's just right there underneath. It's it's never been a New Year's Day, but, um, you know, late December, it's right there under what the playoff is now for the New Year's Six, of course. Go from the West Coast, the East Coast, and the Rose Bowl, Fiesta Bowl, Cotton Bowl, Sugar Bowl, Peach, and Orange Bowl then as well. Um you know, Citrus, Gator, Outback, the Holiday Bowl. You can't forget about the Alamo Bowl. Um, I think we'll remember the Alamo uh, with Oregon and Oklahoma uh, to wrap up uh, one of the final days of 2021 with the Sooners going duck hunting. And then as we move on, thank you for listening. As always, I'm your host, Encyclopedia Sports, Koi and Luke96. Be sure to like, follow, and subscribe on social media. Links in the description below. I believe this next bowl game between North Carolina and South Carolina is the only rivalry game we will witness during this upcoming bowl season. If I'm mistaken, let me know in the comments below. But um, they'll play in Charlotte, basically halfway as mentioned uh, with one of the previous bowl games as well for these two schools to meet where they normally meet at in Charlotte at Bank of America Stadium to begin the season. Um, you know, they never have really played each other, recently at least, uh, on campus uh, of either North Carolina or South Carolina. But um, one of the two... Somebody's going to be holding a lot of hands, whether that's uh, the Tar Heels holding teammates, coaches' hands, holding the trophy high in the air potentially as well when the game's all said and done with. Flip it. Same goes for South Carolina potentially. This is going to be a dogfight. Um, I feel it's going to come down to uh, the final play of the game and um, may the best team win North Carolina, I think they'll come out on top. Give me Carolina. Um, interesting tidbit uh, in this official Duke's Mayo Bowl. Uh, Mac Brown, of course, coached North Carolina uh, before he left for Texas and coached against Frank Beamer in the ACC, who was at Virginia Tech, until, of course, uh, they brought in Justin Fuente to replace 
Beamer Ball, whenever he retired, now, of course, they fire him. Brent Pry, the Hokie head coach. But Frank's son and Shane Beamer is the head coach of South Carolina. So I believe Mac Brown might be, at least as of late, big D1 college football. One of the, if not the only, head coach to coach against a father and then son duo in his third job but second to North Carolina and then against the son at a different school if that makes sense I believe I said that right but um, should be a good game both teams are 6 and 6 okay so you know one more game for a bowl game North Carolina a little bit of a disappointing season um, Sam Howe, I think, is going to be the difference maker. I'm going to pick Carolina. Uh, now, if they turn the ball over way too much, South Carolina can capitalize and score points. Uh, but they're coming off of a shutout rivalry loss against Clemson in the Palmetto Bowl. So, um, you know, back-to-back rivalry games to close out the year for them um, to potentially build some of the SEC East. But, um, of course, you have Georgia. Florida, Tennessee in front of them, among a few others. And speaking of Tennessee, they'll stay in their home state to play Purdue out of the Big Ten in this year's Music City Bowl. Tennessee can score points. But Purdue, they upset Iowa and Michigan State this year. So the Boilermakers playing spoilers. This game... Could be close, however, last time Purdue played in this very bowl game, the Music City Bowl, a few years back against Auburn. They got absolutely steamrolled and blown out of the building. Um, Purdue, I think they've learned from that. I think they'll give Tennessee a run for their money. I mean, Tennessee's past couple years, for the most part, coming back from the dead, it seems like. Um, You know, another coin flip game, to be honest with you. Um, being a Penn State and a Big Ten fan myself, I'm going to have to lean a little bit towards Purdue to pick up the win, but I would not be surprised if Tennessee did, in fact, end up winning. Chick-fil-A Peach Bowl, the first of the New Year's Six to be played this year, followed by the playoff the next night on New Year's Eve, and then on New Year's Day, we'll see the Fiesta, Rose, and Sugar Bowl to follow with the National Championship game once again to be played on Monday night, January the 10th, but with Pitt and Pat Narduzzi's former employer in Michigan State. Of course, he was the defense coordinator under Mark D'Antonio, but D'Antonio no longer the head coach there. It's Mel Tucker in his second year. And um, after a two-win campaign last year, they're sitting at 10-2. Michigan State is with losses to Purdue and Ohio State. Pitt, really, honestly, to be honest with you, um, as a Penn State fan, um, they probably should be undefeated. Um, They won the ACC over Wake Forest last Saturday. Lost by three against Western Michigan. Uh, Big win at home uh, against Clemson. But then, you know, they had a letdown uh, the following week and lost to Miami who will play uh, Washington State in the Sun Bowl uh, the next day. But we'll get to that game here in a second. This game will be a defensive showdown. This is going to be a slugfest. Uh, The thing that's going to hurt Pitt right now even with uh, Kenny Pickett starting at quarterback still for the Panthers. Um, Mark Whipple, offense coordinator for Pitt, just resigned a little bit ago. Um, He, I would have to think, is taking a job elsewhere. I mean, why would you resign um, unless you're going to retire before a bowl game? Um, It doesn't look like... Now he'll be coaching in this bowl game. Um, I think that'll hurt Pitt a little bit. I don't know how much, though. I mean, they still could find a way to win. Um, But back to my Big Ten roots, I got to root for Michigan State, and I'm going to pick Sparty uh, to 
beat Pitt in the Peach Bowl. So we'll see what the cat drags in uh, come December the 30th in the ATL uh, for the Pitt Panthers. Um, you know, Kenny Pickett sitting in New York City for the Heisman Trophy for a reason. Um, he just broke all of Dan Marino's records for the most part. He's going to be a first-round pick next year, it seems like, come NFL draft time. But Pitt's going to have to find another way to win the game. Um, they've had a lot of close ones uh, this year as well. Uh, so really, there's no wiggle room. They could be undefeated, as mentioned, probably should be. Um, you know, but a few of their close games, they lucky enough, it seems like, to uh, come out on the winning side because those all, of course, could have been losses and they, um, you know, could be, um, of course, sitting with a uh, worse record than they are right now. And with Narduzzi, of course, current pit coach, um, you know, former Michigan State defense coordinator for years, um, I believe seven or eight, if I'm not mistaken, under Narduzzi, or under D'Antonio Narduzzi was, excuse me, uh, I had said earlier this year, until, of course, Tucker uh, signed an extension that keeping an eye out for Pat Narduzzi to take over Michigan State with the success he's had at Pitt this year. Uh, I mean, for Pitt football, 11-2 and a New Year's Six, a Peach Bowl, uh, that's a damn good season. This doesn't uh, happen that often. Last time they went to a New Year's Six Bowl was back in 2004 when Larry Fitzgerald was still playing in college, and he's been in the NFL for how long now? Not playing this year. It looks like he's going to be done, but you get my point. So um, this game, to me, feels something along the lines of, you know, 10-7, maybe, you know, a little high scoring than that, 2017, you know, low scoring defense showdown, believe me. Um, but in the end, seeing both of these teams for the most part, all season long, you know, Penn State fan, not uh, far from Pitt. You know, Penn State just lost to Michigan State, so I saw that game, of course, firsthand. It should be a good one. Hopefully it is. Um, and then the New Year's Six, of course, with all the rest of the bowl games we played. Keep rolling, and we get into the New Year with a bang, so to speak, and end the year on a high, even though... You know, as mentioned at the start, most wonderful time of the year, college football bowl season. It's also one of the uh, worst because football season is about to end over the next few months. Uh, and then, you know, we'll have the long dog days of summer uh, until next fall, until next season begins. But, of course, as always, that'll be here before you know it. But um, I know I'm rambling on about um, Pitt and Michigan State for some unknown reason, more than I, I believe any other game I've talked about. Uh, to this point in time yet and we still got a few more to get through but we're almost to the end so once again thanks for tuning in and listening but I'm going to have to go with Michigan State over Pitt but I would not be shocked if Pitt did end up winning and then uh, we'll head out west to Sin City Las Vegas Nevada for the Las Vegas Bowl the Big Ten in this very bowl game for the first time ever It'll be the Wisconsin Badgers, and you play to win the game. Herm Edwards, Arizona State Sun Devils, both teams at 8-4. It'll be a 10-30 Eastern kick on ESPN. Uh, Wisconsin's going to run the ball. Arizona State, they've had uh, trouble stopping the run this year, so uh, just knowing Wisconsin and what Wisconsin does on Wisconsin, i got to pick the Badgers as well. I mean, you can call me a Big Ten homer all you want. I really don't care, but... Um, on paper, I mean, of those last three games with three Big Ten schools as well, Purdue, Michigan State, and Wisconsin against Tennessee, Pitt, and Arizona State, Wisconsin is going to have the better shot to win over ASU, uh, no doubt about it. Um, and then, like I said, I wouldn't be shocked. I mean, hell, Pitt played Tennessee this year, so there's comparison uh, there with uh, Purdue beating Michigan State as well. You know, you want to – uh, go back to those games earlier this season as well, but um, just hoping for a lot of good bowl games. Um, you know, it's the end of the football season, unfortunately, as mentioned, but uh, yeah, Wisconsin, I think of those three, would have the best shot to win, followed by, probably in reverse order, Michigan State and then Purdue over uh, Tennessee, but um, we'll see what happens. It's why they play the game, of course, it's not side on paper, side on field, 
We'll see what gives. I'm sure, as always, something will. But uh, I'll digress on that for the now time being. Uh, we'll move into uh, New Year's Eve. Uh, the Gator Bowl, Texas A&M returns. They beat NC State in this game a few years back. Um, they actually played Wake Forest in a uh, bowl game a few years ago as well. And that was a shootout, if I'm not mistaken. I'm actually going to have to look that up right now. Let's look up uh, some bowl history with uh, Wake Forest, who had a uh, phenomenal season, along with um, A&M, of course, back mid-October, it really was. Um, they upset on a game-winning field goal, uh, the Crimson Tide, Alabama. And, uh, yeah, it would have been uh, the Belk Bowl officially for A&M and Wake Forest back at the end of the 2017 season. Now the uh, Dukes Mayo Bowl, formerly known as the Meineke Car Care Bowl in Charlotte. Um, it was a final for Wake Forest winning 55-52. So if that's on a sh- shootout, I don't know what is then. Um, but uh, consistency for... The Aggies under Jimbo Fisher, of course, uh, after he left uh, Florida State. Um, he's had success in the postseason. Wake Forest, you know, like I said, phenomenal year. Uh, ACC championship game, uh, first appearance in years. Um, didn't beat Pitt. Had him right where they wanted him at, it seemed like, last weekend. But um, after that fake slide by Kenny Pickett, uh, that went for a touchdown early. Uh, and then even in the second half, they just put it to them. And turnovers cost the Demon Deacons. Um, and this is a big Texas team in Texas A&M. To me, this feels like, even with the history of them playing in bowl game just a few years back, I think for the most part, if you haven't, go check it out. But for the most part, everybody's seen the movie or even the TV show, Friday Night Lights. But for the most part, the movie. Remember when... Permian goes up against that one big uh, Texas high school that I'm now that I bring it up drawing a blank on their actual high school name. If anybody does in fact know, uh, let me know in the comments. Um, been a while actually since I've seen that movie, but you know, compare that. It's, it's sort of relatable to be honest with. That it seems to me as you know, Wake Forest is. Permian High School right now, and, and they're going up against one of the best teams in the country. This is a top 25 showdown, uh, a good Gator Bowl matchup, being an 11 a.m. kick on New Year's Eve from Duval between Wake Forest and A&M. 10-3, and 8-4, A&M's better, and A&M's going to find a way to win. They've had some issues more so than not injuries um, at for the most part as well. Every single position this year, offense, defense, and special teams in all three phases, but more so than not at quarterback. Um, they'll run the ball. They'll play good defense. This game it could turn into another shootout, but um, what other score ends up as A&M's uh, going to be your winner? They're coming off of a um, Orange Bowl win uh, last year against North Carolina. So back to the Sunshine State uh, for them. Uh, They've won a few uh, straight, looking for their third in a row under Jimbo. Make it fourth, excuse me, fourth. They've already won three in a row um, since he took over. But um, Christmas trees and all on the street. He returns to Florida, and um, he'll win as he did at Florida State with A&M and another Gator Bowl over Wake Forest, the team he's familiar with as well, coaching in the ACC. Texas A&M, I do believe, will beat Wake Forest. And then the Sun Bowl, they're great. The Tony the Tiger Sun Bowl on CBS. This is the one CBS game. Fox has the Holiday Bowl. And then Barstool will have the Arizona Bowl as they are sponsoring that. And that will be coming up next. But uh, Washington State and Miami and El Paso um, should be a good game. I mean, both teams are 7-5. The the key here, I know know Mark Cristobal is not going to be coaching for the U. Not yet, at least. Um, Just took over, left Oregon. But 
he just coached in the Pac-12 for, what, four or five years, and he beat Washington State this year as well at home. So he'll have some input. He'll give whoever's coaching on the coaching staff and all the players playing in the game uh, some input, some advice. Um, he'll have some say, but not much, because he's, of course, not officially the head coach yet, but he is at the same time. It's just that dead period in between from – when you get hired until you start working. But um, Miami, they'll find a way to win this game because of uh, Cristobal. Washington State had a hell of a year. I mean, fire their coach midseason uh, because of COVID, and then they named their interim their full-time coach now moving ahead. And, hell, they could have been playing in the Pac-12 championship game if a game or two – you know, would have went their way, or even with the tiebreakers, if somebody else would have won rather than lost. But um, should be a good one. Hopefully, it is. I think Miami. It's a little hard to pick against Miami, but they're sort of you know in the same mix as you know all the big blue bloods that, for the most part, still think they're relevant, but they're sort of not, even though they're there, but they're not. It's just hard to explain. I think if you know, you know, but. Um, Miami, they win the Sun Bowl, and then uh, one bite. Everyone knows the rules. The uh, Barstool Sports Arizona Bowl with Central Michigan and Boise State. Central Michigan can score points. Jim McElwain, of course, former coach of Colorado State, and Florida, now a Chippewa. Um, He was Saban's offense coordinator about a decade or so ago uh, before he got those gigs and now he's in the MAC scoring uh, points on midweek football games but they're taking on Boise State who okay they lost um, on Black Friday there uh, to San Diego State early 9 a.m. local kick out west um, they've had an up and down year uh, probably should have a few more wins um, but 7-5 is still good for them, but just not as good as what they're used to, of course, uh, under Chris Peterson and then Brian Harson, who you know both left for Washington and Auburn, and then a former Bronco and Andy uh, Avalos takes over. And, I mean, you look at their schedule early on in the season, non-conference-wise at least, uh, they lost to Central Florida and they lost to Boise State. Lost by five, lost by one. Should have won both because I remember both of those games um, on a Thursday or Friday night to begin the season. And then it was bonus coverage game I flipped on after a, another college football game from over this year. But then, you know, just a few letdowns um, against, uh, you know, a few schools you would think they would, you know, for the most part normally beat. But um, this is another coin flip game here. Uh, going back to, I'll let you know uh, what a buddy of mine had to say for, what was it, the Kent State. And talking about Boise State on the blue turf, yeah, it was uh, the famous Idaho Potato Bowl. Kent State and Wyoming um, had to uh, refer a lifeline and see who he thought because I had no idea and I still don't but he says go with Kent State so I'm going to pick Kent State and then give me Boise State for the hell of it because Boise State back to App State they've been one of the most consistent programs um, over the past 25 years as well uh, in college football so it'll be a 2 o'clock Eastern kick so 11 a.m. local from uh, Tucson of the Arizona Wildcats for the first ever Barstool Sports Arizona Bowl. New sponsor in Barstool Sports. And we'll get to the college football playoff with Portnoy's alma mater, his favorite team in Michigan, in a minute. But um, we'll move to the New Year's Bowl games now. We'll save the playoff with the Cotton and Orange Bowl and then the National Championship game for last And then we'll sign off. Just once again, thanks for tuning in and listening. So Cincinnati, Alabama, Georgia, Michigan, game picks in a minute, and then winners to face in the National Championship game. 
but on Saturday, January the 1st, we'll have the Outback Bowl, the Fiesta Bowl, the Citrus Bowl, the Rose Bowl, and the Sugar Bowl, followed by the Texas Bowl. It's going to be on a Tuesday, early January for some unknown reason. I don't know why they don't put that, you know, late December sometime on a day there's only, you know, two, maybe three games because then for the most part, as mentioned earlier as well, you know, there, there's a few days in which there's only two games, only three, some four or five. There's one for six, but, uh, yeah, that just seems out of place last. But I, I guess we can watch more college football then at that point uh, after what would it be week 17 of the NFL with the New Year's games that weekend as well, and then week 18 with the National Championship game and then the NFL playoffs begin, and then on to the Super Bowl we go. So um, more football is better. Uh, so we'll take it, no doubt about it. But um, the Outback Bowl will feature for the first time ever, which is a big surprise in my opinion. I'm surprised that the Lions and Hogs have never faced off each other, especially like say back in the 50s, 60s, or 70s. Um, but the uh, Penn State Lions will head to their 51st bowl game in program history to take on the Arkansas Razorbacks. Uh, however, with the Hogs ranked at 21st in the country, Penn State's a two-point favorite right now. Um, I'll get more into this matchup, of course, with uh, a live watch-along or action stream live right here on YouTube on New Year's Day. So we'll get into the fine details of the uh, Outback Bowl then. But um, I think uh, at the end of uh, that matchup, a noon kick, so a you know typical Saturday for college football for a Penn State game, either noon, 3.30, or at night. Um, the Nittany Lions will be eating bacon-topped blooming onions. That's all I'll have to say about it now, but just be sure to uh, tune back in for a live watch along reaction stream live right here on YouTube on New Year's Day for College Ball, the Outback Bowl, the 2022 Outback Bowl uh, between the blue and white Penn State Lions and the Arkansas Razorbacks, who had a hell of a season. Um, they beat Texas. They beat Texas A&M. Got shut out and blown out at Georgia. Should have beat Ole Miss. The common opponent is Auburn. Penn State beat Auburn right here in Happy Valley week three back in uh, September. And then Auburn went to Fayetteville and beat the Hogs. Um, Arkansas State, uh, Arkansas Pine Bluff, excuse me, Arkansas beat. Um, you know, their, their three non-conference wins, okay, Rice, Texas, or four non-conference games, I should say. Um, Rice, Texas, which that's going to be an SEC matchup in the next few years anyway, so you can't even really say non-conference anymore. So three, four, however you want to put it. They beat Rice, Texas, Georgia Southern, and Arkansas Pine Bluff. And they probably should have beat Alabama on the road, to be honest with you. Arkansas is good. And the thing with um, Penn State not being able to run the football and not being able to stop the run, it'll be a long day um, if that keeps up. But uh, Arkansas, yeah, a few big rivalry games for them uh, this year, so to speak. Texas, Texas A&M, along with uh, LSU and then Mizzou to close out the year. Um, and, yeah, they probably should have beat Bama, um, but did not, which a bit unfortunate for them. I mean, they have two more wins or even one more win, you know, with the way the SEC West shaked out. Who knows? Maybe they were sitting in Atlanta last week, you know, in a rematch with Georgia, and then is it 37 or nothing again? Probably not, but they still lose. I'd have to say so, yes, probably, but you never know. But all hypothetically, that's not what happened. They're still sitting in Florida for the first time in 15 years. So back to Pitt. For Arkansas football, a season like this doesn't happen um, too often, especially the way they've uh, 
played the past two years. I don't need to bring up Brett Bielema or Chad Morris, uh, do I, Hog fans? Um, with Bielema, it, it just didn't work out there towards the tail end. I mean, he won at first, but then it, it got worse as it went on. And then uh, Chad Morris was an absolute dumpster fire. Um, and he's working as an offense coordinator, if I'm mistaken, somewhere. I don't know where, but... Um, I'm sure Jerry Jones is going to have something to say about this matchup. Uh, Hog alum, of course, he owns the Dallas Cowboys. And Penn State's last bowl game, well, they went to Jerry's World, AT&T Stadium in North Texas, and beat Memphis in the Cotton Bowl. Of course, Penn State last year uh, declined to go to a bowl game uh, with COVID, even though they uh, had a winning record for the most part. I don't count it. Uh, as a losing season. They started 0-5, won four in a row, finished 4-5, and but uh, Penn State still has not had a losing season, even though technically they did last year, but they didn't because I don't count it, since 2004. But they're going back to the Outback Bowl for the fourth time, first in a decade. Uh, they've defeated Auburn, and who they actually beat this year as well in Arkansas, lost to, along with Tennessee, and then lost to Florida. So, um Interested and excited to uh, see how the Outback Bowl goes with uh, Penn State and Arkansas. But, yeah, as mentioned, that's all I'll say about it now. Uh, we'll have, you know, three, three and a half, four, maybe a five-hour uh, stream. We'll have enough time on New Year's uh, to talk about this matchup with Penn State and Arkansas. So, um, we are Penn State. we Pig Suey. Um, calling all Hog fans uh, to tune in as well. So, um, just be sure to tune in uh, to listen, watch some Live watch long reactions live right here on YouTube of the 2022 Outback Bowl with Penn State and Arkansas. But we are Penn State. I'm a Penn State fan. I can't pick against the main line. So Penn State over Arkansas in the Outback Bowl. About an hour or so later, the Fiesta Bowl will kick off with uh, a top 10 showdown between Oklahoma State and Notre Dame. I don't think Marcus Freeman's the right guy for the job. I just don't. I feel it's going to be Tyrone Willingham all over again. Um, technically, he's going to be coaching in his first ever game as a head coach. So why not start in a bowl game? Um, Oklahoma State was, what, an inch or two short of going to the playoff, losing to Baylor in the Big 12 championship game their last weekend. Uh, you know, Baylor didn't get it anyway, and neither did Notre Dame, and Brian Kelly left for LSU, but... Um, should be a good game. I mean, I, I know some people were hammering uh, for a different Peach and Fiesta Bowl matchup with those four teams, potentially switching a few spots. Um, but uh, this game, Oklahoma State can score, but their defense coordinator, Jim Knowles, is heading to Columbus to take over Ohio State as their new D.C. Um, they can stop you. If need be, and I mean, it was a defense showdown with them and Baylor last week for the most part, but they, once they get in the red zone, they can't punch it in. So I think that might hurt them. And then Notre Dame can score too. This might be just like the Peach Bowl, you know, low scoring defense showdown and whoever has the ball last or whoever can make more big plays potentially. Um, if it does turn into shootout or if it doesn't, you know, whoever has the ball last is a shootout, okay, wins. But then if it's, you know, low scoring, run the ball down your throat, play good defense, whoever makes more big plays will win. I'm going to take Mike Gundy in Oklahoma State to beat Notre Dame. Um, I've just never seen, no, because nobody has uh, either, Marcus Freeman coach as a head coach in college football. He's always been an assistant. Um, and like I said, I don't think it's the right hire. I think everybody thinks it's the right hire, and I might be the lone man out. Let me know in the comments below if I am, but... Um, Notre Dame last time in the Fiesta Bowl they got blown out against Ohio State so from one OSU to another um, in Oklahoma State um, go Pokes Cowboys will beat the Fighting Irish and they'll send the Golden Domers back to church Iowa and Kentucky in the Citrus Bowl so on New Year's we have a noon kick two one o'clock games and then a five and a nine with the Rose and Sugar Bowl um, talked about this matchup a little bit ago. Um, this will also be a defensive game. Low scoring. Um, 
I was going to end up winning, and Kirk Ferentz will get the better of uh, Hawkeye alum and Mark Stoops, Bob's one brother, um, who also played at Iowa, how all Stoops did, uh, coming from Youngstown, but um, Kentucky's sort of in the SEC East what I was in the Big Ten West, you, you think about it. Um, you know, like I said earlier, with Iowa State also in Orlando, you know, I don't know if trip-wise anybody else is going to be staying, you know, falling that game uh, into the new year. But I wouldn't think Iowa fans really would mind, even though they hate each other, um, unless they're going to be there to root against them. That's a different story. But make it tough on Kentucky and bring home potentially two big uh, bull wins for the state of Iowa back to the heartland. But Iowa will beat Kentucky. Iowa's going to beat Kentucky. Issues coming off of the Big Ten title game, yeah, I know. Quarterback play seemed like they were running the same damn play the whole entire game and couldn't stop Michigan. But uh, in the end, Kirk Ferentz, he's the longest tenured coach in college football right now. He's won enough bowl games with the Hawkeyes to know how to win another, and uh, I think he will. And um, Iowa will get to their 11th win of the season. Kentucky, if they win, they'll get to 10, and they'll both finish with 10 on the year. But Iowa at 10 and 4 then, and Kentucky 10 and 3 as Iowa sits now. But um, yeah, these spreads, uh, a lot of less than fives for the favorite. But um, hey, regardless of who's favored or not. That's why I play the game, and that's why they're called upsets. So, um, this is another top 25 showdown. Penn State's the only unranked team playing on New Year's. Everybody else is ranked. Um, but, really, that doesn't have anything to do with anything. But at the same time, it's just, you look at it, it's like, okay. Because the New Lions, I mean, whenever I heard Penn State was in the Outback Bowl on Sunday, I was like, what? Like, a little shocked. Because I wasn't expecting them to get a uh, New Year's Bowl. It was either going to be to New York City for the uh, Pinstripe Bowl, which eventually went to Maryland, who they beat. Okay, so Penn State advances. And then also the um, Vegas and Music City Bowl. And they beat Wisconsin uh, week one to begin the year, but they didn't play Purdue. Um, so, I mean, it's always just a domino effect, as it is with coaching carousel and the standings and who's getting a better bowl game because head-to-head wins and et cetera. So, um, yeah, hoping for, as always, good New Year's Day bowl games um, because coming off of the cultural play of the night before New Year's Eve, which we'll get to those games here in a second as well, once again, you sit down on New Year's and you watch football. And that's what I do. I don't know about you, but that's what I do. I mean, that's what I've always done, and that's what I'll continue to do. But um, Penn State, Oklahoma State, and Iowa. And then we'll head out for the granddaddy of them all to Pasadena for the Rose Bowl. Utah playing in their first ever Rose Bowl. Going to take on Ohio State, who beat Washington a few years ago in this very game. It was Urban Meyer's last game as a college head coach. Took the year off. And then back at it this year with, or he took two years off then actually, in 19 and 20. Back at it this year with the Jags and the NFL. And and his name came up for Notre Dame, maybe even USC or Texas last year. But, um, yeah, he'll be in the NFL for the time being. And then they fire him. He's probably going to be done as a coach, I bet. But um, Utah, one of his former schools, uh, Kyle Winningham took over when he left for Florida. Um, you know, because Urban already had a chance to go to Notre Dame, and he said no, and he went to Florida. And then, of course, the Ohio State stint, national championship as well. And then, hey, another challenge, just as it is for Lincoln Riley and Brian Kelly to go to, you know, USC and LSU. Never done what he's doing and try to win, but it's not working out for him. But I'll digress. It doesn't really have anything to do with this right now either by any means but um utah is a lot like uh wisconsin they not necessarily run the ball all the time but they get players 
that mold what they do best. They recruit for their system. They recruit who they think will, in the end, put them in position to, to win football games. Might not be the, you know, uh, best athlete by any means that, you know, this kid could be starting elsewhere, yes, but, um, you know, also, you think about it, big Power 5 schools, say also in the Pac-12, like, you know, USC or Oregon or um, Ohio State, Alabama, Georgia, you know, list goes on and on, just naming a few schools off the top of my head right now. You know, they could be backing up then. Well, they're, they're starting at Utah, and they're they're playing good football. Just go back to their um, two wins against Oregon. That says their season right there. Ohio State's probably going to win. And I probably should be picking them. But I'm not going to. I'm going to take Utah in the upset in the Rose Bowl. And the um, 22 for both players. in Aaron and Ty, who were killed late last year and early this year. They won the Pac-12 for the first time. And I think they'll win their first Rose Bowl in their first Rose Bowl appearance uh, this year as well. Ohio State just, um, like I said, I probably should be picking them, but I'm not going to. Utah's a lot like Michigan right now, too, to be honest with you. They are. Um, with uh, what Michigan did to the Buckeyes in the game a few weeks back, just running the ball and playing good defense, just playing smart football. Play fundamentally sound football. Um, don't do too much. Run it when you got to run it. Throw it when you got to throw it. Run to pass, pass to run. Play good defense, rely on your special teams, etc. This might be a special teams game. Um, both teams, 10 wins. Utah really, I mean, they win a few of their close losses. They might be where, you know, Ohio State's at right now, along with Notre Dame and Oklahoma State, and even Baylor, who beat OSU in the Big 12 championship game there last week, maybe in the playoff or right on the outside looking in. You know, um, and that was after a disaster of a season for them last year. So, um, Utah, the Utes, are going to beat the Bucks in the Rose Bowl. Ohio State's going down. Utah going to beat Ohio State in the 2022 Rose Bowl. I'm sure, you know, there's more I could probably say about that game now, but I'm not going to. We'll hold off um, until a later date. We'll have time to talk um, and recap some of these bowl games during that one live stream uh, with the Outback Bowl for Penn State, Arkansas. And then, uh, you know, more live watch-along action streams live right here on YouTube. Uh, regardless of whether it's college football, the NFL, or professional wrestling as well. Uh, we'll fill in when we need to fill in uh, with what we're going to talk about then. So, um, yeah, just keep an eye out for uh, more videos live right here on the channel. And thank you once again for listening. But Utah is my big upset, uh, defeating Ohio State in the Rose Bowl, I guess you could say. Uh, at least ranking-wise it would be, uh, because Ohio State's above the Utes. Um, I mean, I guess you could say Oklahoma State and then Ole Miss, even Penn State over Arkansas, even though, you know, they're a favorite. But um, that that's the big upset for me right now. But keep in mind, we still got to predict the playoff here in a second. Um, Baylor, Ole Miss, Sugar Bowl. Offense, defense, as mentioned earlier. Dave Aranda and his Baylor Bear defense. Lane Kiffin and his Old Miss Reb offense. This might be a back and forth type of game. Old Miss, they'll win. I don't know by how much. Um, but Matt Corral in his final year, he's going to go out on top. Uh, he's going to be another top quarterback draft pick it seems like next year as well in the NFL draft but um, Ole Miss talk about Arkansas potentially being in Atlanta coming out of the SEC West their two losses 
They lost to Alabama, and they lost to Auburn. So, I mean, everybody takes each other out eventually, but um, there's going to be, you know, a few schools from this conference winning, a few schools from this conference winning. We'll see how the standings look with who wins the bowl season. Um, the SEC, for the most part, normally does well. The Big Ten doesn't. Everybody else right in the middle, it seems like. But um, Ole Miss will beat Baylor. Uh, just too high-powered on offense for uh, for Baylor to stop. But they just won the Big 12 playing great defense all season long. And for the most part, always being in shootouts because, you know, the Big 12 – up until as of late, nobody really plays defense, but now they're starting to. Um, so, Ole Miss with the win there, and then another SEC Big 12 uh, showdown. This is the um, Texas Bowl on Tuesday, January the 4th, so a little bit of a gap in between um, the New Year's Day games and then NFL Sunday again and then a Monday night game. I believe the Browns play the Steelers that night on the third. And then LSU Kansas State. College Bowl playoff semis would, at this point in time, already been played. We'll have winners in the National Championship game the following Monday. But go Tigers. For Ed Orgeron, go Tigers. I think LSU will find a way to win over K State. Chris Kleiman uh, getting rid of a few assistants right now in the little apple of Manhattan, Kansas. But. Um, I mean, he's had a decent run since taking over uh, for uh, Bill Snyder after his uh, national championship uh, campaign following Craig Bowles at Wyoming at North Dakota State, and now he's at Kansas State, so tie all that up. I mean, maybe a little bit bigger program. He's going to be winning a little bit more, but, you know, K-State at 7-5, and five, that's a good year. Um, but go Tigers for uh, LSU. I mean, K-State could use what um, bad karma or voodoo, if you want to, right now for Brian Kelly and LSU. Of course, everything the past week or so involving uh, that hire as, you know, rat poison, if you will, as well. But... Um, for Ed Orgeron, he's not going to be coaching. Uh, but for Coach O, go Tigers. We'll see where he lands. But LSU over Kansas State. And then, um, how about this? We give a, a short recap of all winners. And then we'll dive into the uh, college football playoff with the Cotton and Orange Bowl as your game on January the 10th. I do believe, in fact, if I'm mistaken, you can go back and listen. Hopefully you've been listening this whole entire time. Off the top of my head, because I don't have these written down. I'm going game by game and picking a winner as I record this. So, um, this is a short recap, but um, and I'm going to try to do my best on remembering who I did, in fact, pick. Um, but I should get this about at least 95, maybe 99.5% right. Toledo over Middle Tennessee State in the Bahamas Bowl. Coastal Carolina defeating Northern Illinois. App State over Western Kentucky. Fresno State to win the PUBG New Mexico Bowl. BYU over UAB. Liberty defeats Eastern Michigan. Utah State over the Beavers of Oregon State. Louisiana Lafayette to win the New Orleans Bowl. Tulsa over ODU. Kent State for the win now. Yes, Kent State to win the famous Idaho Potato Bowl, defeating Wyoming. UTSA over San Diego State. Go Army beat Mizzou, but Go Navy beat Army on Saturday. Miami, Ohio over North Texas. Central Florida over Florida in the... 
it's no longer the bad boy mowers Gasparilla Bowl, but it's still a Gasparilla Bowl. What a name. Hawaii defeating Memphis. Picked Ball State on Christmas to beat Georgia State. Nevada and I believe BC, Boston College for the hell of it, as mentioned, uh, to win their respective bowl games over Western Michigan and East Carolina. Houston, Air Force over Louisville for sure, yeah. Mike Leach defeating Texas Tech and Mississippi State for the win. UCLA, still going to pick Minnesota over Press Virginia. SMU defeating Virginia, Virginia Tech over Maryland, Clemson and Oklahoma, along with North Carolina, Purdue, Michigan State, and Wisconsin, along with Texas A&M to win the Gator Bowl, Miami, Boise State for the win on New Year's Eve, New Year's Day, we are Penn State. I'm a man, I'm not 40 anymore, but Mike Gundy's probably at least 55, 56 now, because that was a good 15, 16 years ago or so now. Give me Oklahoma State over Notre Dame. That might be a uh, first ever matchup as well, if I'm not mistaken. Um, Just too much inexperience for Marcus Freeman. But Notre Dame's really not going to be any different. I mean, Tommy Reese still going to be offense coordinator, you still have Jack Cohen playing quarterback. They're going to run the ball, play good defense, and should be a good game. But Oklahoma State for the win. Hard to pick against Iowa in a bowl game, so go Hawks. Utah. Utah will beat Ohio State, mark my words. And if not, and you say, well, you were wrong, I'll give you a free subscription right here on YouTube, so be sure to hit the red subscribe button. But um, Utah's my big upset over Ohio State right now. But, of course, picks could change from now until then. I record this uh, December the 7th. New Year's Day is weeks away. You know, I might have a change of heart and back to my Big Ten roots and pick uh, pick Ohio State. Um, you know, Ohio State in the Rose Bowl, they've won a lot of them. So it's a little hard to pick against them uh, in that regard, too. But in program history, they do not have a winning record during bowl season. Keep that in mind. And, you know, they've lost a few big bowl games, even with winning the Rose Bowl over UW a couple years back in Urban's last game, as mentioned earlier. You know, they've been in the playoffs a few times. Okay, they won the national championship the first year, but they've also lost uh, in bowl season as of late, including a few wins, but um, Utah. Utah will beat Ohio State, I believe. But who knows? Buckeyes might just go out there and blow them out for all we know. Um, And then Ole Miss, I think, will win the Sugar Bowl. And they'll uh, send Baylor packing back to Waco. The Bears are going to have to call up Chip and Joanna to help them rebuild into uh, Dave Aranda's tenure as the head coach in the... Big 12 for the Baylor Bears and Baylor, Iowa State. I mean, Cincinnati, Kansas State, Oklahoma State's a team to keep an eye on for, though, with this, you know, realignment, you know, for the Big 12 because Oklahoma and Texas are leaving. The future is bright for um, most, if not all, those schools that I just named off, plus maybe a few more. But um, yeah, Ole Miss over Baylor in the Sugar Bowl and then give me LSU. Go Tigers, once again, over Kansas State. And then the college football playoff national championship game. Well, we'll have the semis first on New Year's Eve. A little hard to pick against Nick Saban this time here as well with Alabama. And then you have Georgia and Michigan in the Orange Bowl. But for the Cotton Bowl, Cincinnati and Alabama first off. Um... I don't know how Alabama's uh, almost a 15-point favorite right now as I speak, but they are officially at a 13-and-a-half mark. But um, Cincinnati, if they don't win, they'll cover that. They're not going to get beat. They're not going to get their ass kicked. They're going to come to play. Cincinnati, they late this year, okay, yeah, a few games held on to win. 
Um, but remember, back what was it, late September, early October. Um, now, Indiana didn't have a good year coming off of last year. But IU had to play a lot of top 10 teams early in the season. They lost all of them. Uh, but Cincinnati went there and won. And then after that, they went to Notre Dame, and that ended up being their signature win this season before, as mentioned, almost blowing it against a, a few schools. But then they put the pedal to the metal there late against um, SMU and East Carolina, who are also in bowl games, as mentioned earlier. And then they beat a top 25 team in Houston um, last weekend to win the American Athletic Conference Championship game. Uh, and now first non-power five to be in the college football playoff. Cincinnati is going to give uh, Nick Saban and Alabama a run for their money. Um, this game is going to be one on defense. Alabama's got a better defense, but Cincinnati on offense can make plays. But so can Alabama. That's the thing. Bryce Young was also sitting in New York City for the Heisman Trophy ceremony, also for a good reason. So um, – I would love to pick Cincinnati. I would. I've been on them all season long. Um, hoping, you know, they would finally put it to the committee and they do just that. Culture Ball Playoff should expand, yes. No doubt about it. But will it? Probably not. Not at least anytime soon. It won't. Um, but, you know, we'll see what the future holds for college football. But in the end, for this first of two semis. I mean, because I would like a Cincinnati-Michigan national championship game. I would. With maybe the best team win at that point. Because arguably, whoever's the better team that night is going to win. But Alabama, in the playoff, they're hard to beat. They lost in the national championship game to Clemson but all the other times they've gone and they're coming off a national championship game appearance and a win last year over Ohio State as well they've made 7 out of 8 trips to the playoff since it began back in um, 2014 They've only lost a total, technically, of three times. And the first time was in the semi. The other two times were in the National Championship Games, and they were both the Clemson. Once to Deshaun Watson, once to Trevor Lawrence. Um, but Luke Fickle is going to have Cincinnati ready to play. And... I'm telling you now, don't be shocked if Cincinnati wins. Now, will they win the national championship then at that point? I don't know. We'll have to, you know, reevaluate then at that point in time. I would like a national championship game of Cincinnati and Michigan, but unfortunately, I don't think we're going to get it. I think we're going to get Alabama and either a rematch with Georgia or Michigan. Go blue, though. I'm picking Michigan against Georgia, but the, the troubling part right now is trying to I really don't even know how to put it but I mean it's not that hard to just hey pick this team pick that team whether it's an upset or not but more so than not if it is okay then like if they do win you're a genius but if they lose you look like a fucking dumbass um Cincinnati's for real it just they're playing Alabama. If they'd be playing Georgia again, that's the, that's the thing. If they'd be playing Georgia in this semi in a rematch of the Peach Bowl from last year, they would for sure win that game this time around, I think. And they would get to the National Championship game. And just think, Cincinnati, Michigan, and Indy, I mean, that place is going to be jam-packed. Home field for both teams, basically. But Alabama travels well. So does Georgia. Everybody in this playoff does. And Cincinnati, for sure, I would hope they really will um, because they've never been in a spot like this before, even though they have, but no technical, in quotes, playoff because the last time they went to New Year's Six, the college football playoff, um, you know, wasn't around. But um, 
what Fickle's done building them up and the future looking bright for them as well, of course, going to the Big 12 at some point in time in the near future. You know, there's no set dates. They're all tentative for when these moves are going to be made, so that's why I say it like I say it, but fuck it. For the hell of it, give me Cincinnati to beat Alabama and give me Michigan because that's the national championship game I want to see. I don't want to see a rematch whether it be in the semi or the national championship game between Alabama and Georgia again. No. But the playoff committee just set themselves up potentially for that. If you want to rematch, you do that first, and then you give us Cincinnati, Michigan, and the semi and may the best team, as mentioned, uh, second go in that regard, win that game then as well. And then only one of the two, not both, make it to the national championship game. But, um, yeah. Go Cats. Give me the Bearcats of uh, Cincinnati to dethrone the national champion Alabama Crimson Tide. You know, roll tide all you want. They lost at AM on a game winning field goal. Okay. Since then, they've so- sort of, you know, started to put it back together. Played a complete game, it seemed like, there um, last week. But in the previous weeks, to that it took them four overtimes to beat Auburn in the Iron Bowl they won by two on a two point play the Arkansas and LSU games came down to the wire with the LSU game if they would have kicked a field goal rather than went for it on fourth and six I believe it was middle of fourth quarter rather than heaving a Hail Mary to um, end the game and try to win it that way, well, you set yourself up for a um, game tying or potential game winning if something else would have happened in that amount of time. And then it, if it goes to overtime, okay, whole new ball game then. And then, you know, because Alabama loses to Auburn. Two losses are done for. It's going to open the door for somebody else. And if they would have lost to Georgia, that would open the door for somebody else, whether it be Notre Dame, uh, Ohio State, Baylor, Oklahoma State. We want to be sitting with this, you know, current four we have right now. But um, I guess you could, you know, call this rat poison for Nick Saban if he's listening. I doubt he is. Uh, but out there, coach. Well, better luck next time because I'm taking Cincinnati, a, a, a school he knows quite well as well. Okay. Um, Grew up in West Virginia. Played at Kent State. Was the head coach at Toledo. Coached under Belichick as defense coordinator for the Browns. And then head coach at Michigan State. So Midwest, Northeast, Mid-Atlantic roots right there for Saban. Of course, LSU, Dolphins now at uh, Alabama and uh, you know of course what he's done the past 15 years is just unbelievable you know it's pretty remarkable for Alabama football to be where they were under the bear and then okay not down years but they weren't as good as they were and then he's got them back on top in a split second so um However many national championships it's been, I believe he's going to go for seven this year, if I'm mistaken, at Alabama. But he has, of course, seven already. Six at Bama, one at LSU. You know, just imagine if, um, okay, he didn't go to the NFL first. What a state at LSU. Well, he probably wouldn't be at Alabama right now. But and he, he wouldn't be at Alabama either if he would have won a Super Bowl, is what I'm getting at in the NFL with the Dolphins. But... To me, okay, he's done this at a a few schools, all these wins and all these championships. Um, he's going to be coaching for a little while longer. I just don't know how much longer. And I've said it a few times this year, so I'll say it again. But I really feel Nick Saban's only going to be coaching until – because he's, he's going to come close if he sticks around for another 15 years or so, average 10 wins a year, which they're currently doing right now as it is anyway. 
for the all-time wins record in college football history for a head coach that is currently held by a former Penn State head coach and Joe Paterno with 409 wins. But Joe Paul right here in Happy Valley did that all at one school over 40-plus years. Saban, Toledo, Michigan State, LSU, and now Alabama. So, I mean, it is what it is when it's all said and done, but... And I really don't even know where I'm going with that by any means, but just a little uh, extra tidbit. Um, just, you know, this is all unscripted. Thoughts um, that I'm currently thinking, uh, sitting down and recording this, so hopefully you're enjoying. Uh, just be sure to like, follow, and subscribe. As always, links in the description below. So, yeah. This game, I mean, may the better teams in both semis win, um, but... I'm going to take Cincinnati to win. I am. I don't know because I really haven't heard or um, seen anything yet. I mean, we're only, what, 24, 48 hours in with the bowl games being announced, you know, another week and a half or so before they actually begin, and then, okay, we'll get there when we get there. But I don't know how many people right now are picking Cincinnati, so I don't know if I'm, you know, on an island by myself by any means, or what, but um, other than the Cincinnati fans, they're out of the question. They can't be included. Just all us outsiders in this uh, college football sports world that it is, but Cincinnati, they'll get to 14-0. and I mean, 13-0 making it as a um, non-power five in the playoff for the first time ever. That's history. I mean, that might be it when it's said and done, you know, because then we'll look at it. Okay, well, good year and good team, but you're just not good enough. You're not better than Alabama or whether they uh, end up playing than Michigan or since uh, Georgia, excuse me, if Cincinnati gets the national championship game and loses then too. Well, all right. I mean, okay, but I think uh, how Saban – for the most part, looks at it all the time. You know, all the talk, you know, from us so-called experts that really don't know a damn thing about football. Fickle is going to be looking at it the same way because, you know, like I said, I, I don't know how many pick, people are picking Cincinnati, but I feel for the most part everybody's, you know, counting them out and, oh, they're done for. They're going to get their ass kicked and blah, 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 blah. He'll have them ready to play. He played under Jim Trestle. He coached under Jim Trestle at Ohio State. Trestle won national championships at Youngstown State, at Ohio State. Okay? There's connection there with Saban at Michigan State as well. So there's a lot of history in the backstory if you really think about it. And these two teams are more similar than not. They're more alike than they are different. Um... And it should be a good game. Hoping for a good game. I don't know why this game's not the late game. Uh, but I guess they don't want the Orange Bowl midday. They want that at night when it's outside rather than in a dome. Cotton Bowl, of course, at AT&T Stadium, Cowboy Stadium in uh, Arlington, Texas. So that'll be at 3.30. Cincinnati, Alabama, a 1-4 matchup with the Tide and Bearcats. And then 2-3 will be Michigan, Georgia with the Wolverines and Dogs. And the big dog's telling me to pick Georgia. But Big Ten fan, go blue. Big Ten with another school representing the playoff. Uh, Ohio State, Michigan State. Michigan joins Michigan State um, as well as, I believe, the only state. Make sure I get this right. Only state in the college football playoff history to send two different teams in two different years. Michigan State got blown out by Alabama the last time there in the Cotton Bowl. Hell, the uh, Rose Bowl last year was the Cotton Bowl. Um, take a look at some college football playoff history right here. I know the Big Ten... Um, they're top with the SEC for sending three schools. But the Big Ten East is the first division to send three different teams. 
Um, so yeah, as mentioned, Michigan, the state of Michigan, Michigan, Michigan State, I believe they're the first state, get this right, in the continental U.S., all um, 48 and then 50 for um, Alaska and Hawaii, and, you know, the Rainbow Warriors are in the Hawaii Bowl, and Alaska doesn't have a school but to play football um, because it'd be like playing hockey uh, on grass. But, uh, yeah, I believe that's right because you look at it by conference. I mean, the Midwest has done well, of course, with Ohio State, Notre Dame, Michigan, Michigan State, but then the Southeast – uh, with Alabama, Georgia, and and Clemson, um, can't forget about Oklahoma being in the mix. Even Florida State and Oregon and U Dub, but yeah, I don't even know where I was going with that either. I know I'm just rambling on here now. Um, almost what two hours in to this recording. Um, so yeah, as always, once again, thanks for tuning in and listening. Be sure to like, follow, and subscribe. But um, Michigan. Michigan's going to win. They'll beat Georgia. The way Georgia looked last week, only allowing, or, um, excuse me, Georgia's defense, yeah, they're only allowing um, an average of seven points per game. And Alabama put, what, 41 on them? And Michigan just put up 42 on um, Iowa in the Big Ten title game last week. Cincinnati is alone unbeaten in the playoffs, so if they win out, we'll have another undefeated national champion. But like I said, I, really, in the end, I, I don't think like that. that's going to happen. I'm going to pick Cincinnati, but Alabama is probably going to win. I'll say that to end that. And then, yeah, go blue. And as a Penn State and a Big Ten fan, Michigan to defeat Georgia, and then that will line up uh, as, well, for me, Cincinnati, Michigan for the national championship, but it'll probably be Alabama, Michigan. So I'll, I'll predict both. Um, if it's because I don't think Georgia has a chance, I don't. They got a quarterback problem, even though their defense is top notch. Their offense, Sesson Bennett, just he looks like a damn deer in headlights. At least last week he did, um, and they can't get over the hump. They they can't beat Alabama, and uh, Georgia's uh, or excuse me Michigan's as good if not better than Alabama. So um, yeah, I'm going to predict both of these with the two outcomes potentially that we could get. Um, even though Georgia could still get there and they win it, and then okay, what do I know at that point? But I don't think Georgia's going to win. I think they're done for. Um, if it's as I want it to be, Cincinnati, Michigan. Go blue. Give me the Wolverines over Cincinnati Bearcats, but I feel a lot of people would be picking Cincinnati to pull the upset then at that point, um, which I wouldn't mind. Um, but then if it's Alabama, Michigan, I mean, that's as good of a game we'd you know probably get in a lifetime probably be the first time since they met since the uh, Orange Bowl about 20 years or so ago, I do you believe, if I'm not mistaken. And we'll get more into uh, the fine details for um, a reevaluation for who is playing the National Championship game with um, everything on the line then, but um, Michigan in the end is the team to beat, I think, and I I think the Wolverines, regardless of who they play, whether it be Cincinnati or Alabama, because I think they're going to beat Georgia. Um, and then I think, really, they'll find a way to beat um, Cincinnati or Alabama. So, looks like nobody's going to have it better than them come uh, January the 10th, if they do, in fact, win the National Championship game. But... Uh, yeah, we'll get more into that discussion later on. I will have uh, live watch long reactions live here on YouTube of both semis as well. So we'll talk more about uh, both games then at that point in time too. So, and I'll probably add more in, discuss, probably repeat myself um, a few more times as I've already done today. I'll, 
along with then you know just tying everything up and uh seeing how it comes out but um let me know in the comments below as always uh what you thought be sure to like follow and subscribe on social media links in the description below so those are my uh bowl game winners for this bowl game bowl season preview live right here on youtube and um i said about oh i don't know almost 10 years or so ago now probably early 2011 2012 it would have been when brady hoke was at michigan and only a few people know this but i'm gonna say it uh so it's out there um of course, I didn't think at that point in time because Harbaugh was still in the NFL with the 49ers after he left Stanford. Um, you know, I didn't think he'd you know return to his alma mater takeover and talk about Georgia not being able to win the big game over Bama. Well, Harbaugh, Michigan, really okay, beat Michigan State and Penn State a few times, but he up until a couple weeks ago in the game could never beat Ohio State. He did just that wins a Big Ten championship as well. I would said then that I thought within five years, just as seeing if it would stick, and it sort of did come 2016, but then they, they lose a game or two, and then, um, you know, it's been all downhill since it, it felt like for Michigan, but they're on the ups again. They just won the first Big Ten in 17 years. But I thought then, this would have been, like I said, 2011-2012. And like I said, only a few people know about this, but now the whole world will. I thought within five years, they would win a national championship game in college football. Not any of the other sports uh, at the NCAA level. College football. I thought Michigan would contend and win a nat natty. Um, of course, it come true, but hey, a few years too late, but... Um, go blue. I picked Ohio State to win the national championship game um, last year over Bama. Um, and, you know, they lost. Like I said, you can call me a Big Ten homer all you want. I really don't care. But um, it, it's like you like this team, you like that team. Okay, so be it. It is what it is. Come bowl season, you want to root for your conference because it's going to make your conference look better and it's going to make your school look ten times better as well so um we'll see how these games play out um of course why they're going to be plays on the side on paper once again side on the field so may the best teams win um it's all fun and games i'm picking this team for the hell of it picking this team because i like their colors or their mascot etc etc you have your reasonings i have mine um but i think uh in the end, come January the 10th, after the college football playoff semis, with whether it be Cincinnati or Alabama, because I can see both teams winning. I think I said my piece on that. Um, I think Michigan's going to win the national championship this year. I do. They're just playing um, great football right now. Talk about uh, a perfect game. That was them for the most part against Ohio State, it felt like, especially late. Running the football is going to be key in these semis. We'll see if these teams, when they need to run the football, if they can or not. Even turnovers and special teams, as always. But um, I think Michigan's going to win the national championship game. So let me know in the comments below, um, as always, what you think what you thought and uh what i can do better but um hopefully you enjoyed thanks for tuning in and listening so um yeah that'll do it for myself your host the encyclopedia sports cool hand luke 96 live right here on youtube so be sure to like follow and subscribe on social media links in the description below the thumbs up button share chat questions or comments super chats super stickers always greatly appreciated as well and uh hopefully you'll tune in for uh, some more live watch along reaction streams live here on youtube uh for culture ball playoff uh with the two semis featuring cincinnati and alabama and georgia and michigan with the uh, outback bowl the next day on new year's with penn state and arkansas and then for the culture ball playoff national championship game then as well 
on Monday night, January the 10th, 2022. But from now until then, hopefully everyone has a Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. Once again, thanks for listening. Go Blue, even though we are Penn State. Penn State had Michigan right where they wanted them at. It would be a different story for the Wolverines. They would have lost that or lost, you know, a few of the other games. Uh, they had close calls uh, against as well. But, um, yeah, go Blue. Michigan is my uh, pick to win the 2022 college football playoff national championship game. Once again, thank you for listening.